Hi, Jane. Thank you so much for being with me today. It's a real pleasure to be here. Good morning. Good morning. So I was excited to hear about the Stuttering Foundation. I know that a lot of times when we see someone like on The Voice or, you know, on some sort of television show who have overcome or even politicians, you know, like our, our own president who have overcome speech disorders. It's pretty exciting to know that there are foundations like yours out there that can help. So do you mind giving us a brief history of the Stuttering Foundation? Well, I'll try to do that. You know, we're coming up on our 75th anniversary, so it is quite a quite a history. But actually, we were founded by my father, Malcolm Fraser, who had a significant stutter, who struggled with, struggled with stuttering all his life, and who decided at age uh, 43 that he was going to do what he could to help other people with the same problem. And so he started the foundation in 1947 and um, continued to support it all his life. And, and uh, for many years, he was in the auto parts business. He was actually one of the founders of Napa Auto Parts. Okay. So that's probably, you know them in your part of the world. Yeah. <laughs> so that was, of course, his career and that was his source of income. But he did uh, definitely give 10% of his he tithed 10% of his annual income to the foundation to help other people. And so that's how we started. We started, of course, with books because there, there weren't, there wasn't an internet. It's hard to imagine now, but there wasn't right. an internet. We had uh, books in public libraries. We wanted to reach people with free materials of ways they could help themselves. And we also got involved in working to train the therapist because although there are many therapists out there, many speech therapists, right. not all of them specialize in stuttering. So one of our targets has been to work with therapists and give them that specialty knowledge of working with uh, children and adults who stutter. Oh, wow. So it doesn't, it goes beyond just a child who's struggling with this issue. It goes into training teachers and, and other therapists. That's, a, that's wonderful. That's right. And not only that, another, uh, another group that you probably haven't thought of is that pediatricians receive no training whatsoever on stuff. And because so many, I'd say almost 80% of children outgrow stuff. Okay. Pediatricians have long been comfortable telling parents, oh, your child will outgrow it. But there's still that 20% that don't necessarily outgrow it and that will need help. So what we're finding is that the younger pediatricians are really delving into the problem, wanting to know more and working closely with the speech pathology community so that those children who do need the extra help are getting it. And also keep in mind that children do get speech therapy in the schools. Okay, okay. So, and that's, that's free therapy. So one of our targets, of course, has been to re -edu to educate in depth those therapists that are in the school so that the kids get the free help and that it's good help. Okay, so is that one of the ways, too, that y'all have continued under this pandemic? I mean, everything is Zoom, and I know that a lot of children have been struggling with that anxiety, first of all, not being in the class, <laughs> not having that hands-on physical, you know, contact. So how has the Stuttering Foundation been able to help those educators and those therapists even now? Well, what's wonderful was for not, not knowing, of course, like any, everybody, uh, <laughs> two years ago, we put most of our materials online on streaming. So we have 105 videotapes on streaming. So of course the therapists have been flocking to those, but many of them are also for individuals. Fine, okay. Many of them for individuals, so really the timing was perfect. Wow, okay. And it is perfect because like you said, it's right there, it's online, it's streaming, and it's free, right? So this is a free- Many of the videos are free. Well, that's fascinating. And you have a lot of classes, you have those great tutorials, you do some awesome work with children, adults, and therapists and doctors now. That's fantastic. So everything now, like I mentioned earlier, when it comes to digital business, in addition to that, we have 
Siri and Alexa and voice text and all of these automatic <coughs> services that we need our speech for. So tell us about this recent development because I read this Wall Street Journal article about how Alexa and Siri and these companies are trying to work with foundations like yourself and other technology companies to help include the stuttering community. So tell us about how that's going and what all the Stuttering Foundation is doing to be a part of that. Well, when you think about it, what triggers Siri or Alexa, of course, is your voice. Right. If you don't have a voice, nothing happens. Yeah. And so, or if your voice goes like that, yeah. or if you have a total block, like some people who stutter simply can't get the word out. But, um, and so it's come to their attention. After all, there's 70 million people in the world who stutter. So it's a significant audience with them. And actually not, maybe not just people who stutter, but how are they going to reach anybody with a voice problem? Mm -hmm. Elderly people with Parkinson's disease sometimes have voice problems. People with cerebral palsy sometimes have voice problems. So they have a, the, the tech companies certainly have an audience that isn't being, or that hasn't been, been reached. So, so of course we've been working with them and the whole stuttering community has been providing them samples of stuttering. And we have some of those free, of course, on our website. Oh, okay. In fact, before I even knew these articles were coming out, we have various and sundry people calling and saying, do you have footage of adults who stutter? Do you have footage of children who stutter? And I didn't put the, I didn't connect it because they didn't say right. we're calling from Apple, we're calling from, uh -huh. from uh, Amazon. And now, of course, I realize why we've had so many calls like that recently. But that enables them to work around um, and, and somehow calibrate Siri and Alexa yeah. so that they will recognize that when they hear that kind of a speech pattern, they need to back off and wait. Okay. So it's really exciting. It is very exciting. It, it opens up a whole new audience. And of course, one of our goals all along, which I didn't mention earlier, but of course it is awareness of stuttering. Yes. Understanding what it is, understanding the myths about it, what it isn't. And um, so of course having Having these tech companies realize the importance of this audience, the size of this audience. Right, right. It's really encouraging. Well, and it's encouraging for, the, for obviously the stuttering community, but it's a benefit to them. You know, it's like a win-win. It's like, definitely win-win. Yeah. The people who stutter win, the tech companies win. Right. And, you know, one thing that's interesting to me, however, you know, it is, Stuttering can be situational. Okay. And one of the examples I always give is if I told you to walk on a plank on the floor, you could do it, your muscles would be fine. But if I said, Ashley, I'm gonna lift it and I'm gonna put it 10 feet in the air and I want you to walk that same plank, I don't think you could do it. No. So the same is true for someone who stutters. If you walk into the courtroom and you have to say something in front of the judge, it's like being 10 feet in the air, the stress on your speech mechanism. It's just like if I told you to walk that plank. So there is, you know, quite often situations like that will, will cause the vocal cords and everything to tense up. So I'm thinking though, at the same time, Alexa and Siri don't uh -huh. particularly create any anxiety unless of course you really need them in a hurry. Right. Right, and the person knows there's a time limit. I even feel that myself because sometimes I have my blonde moments and I can't remember what it was I was gonna say and I'm in the middle of something and it and it does, you feel that stress of, oh, I better hurry up and say something or it's gonna cut me off. There's nothing worse than time pressure. No. <laughs> nothing worse. And I think, you know, it's an interesting thing when you begin to study making speeches and learn more about it that silence isn't necessarily a bad thing. It can be a really powerful thing. And we all have to learn to be comfortable with silence. Yes. Oh, Jane, that is so important. You know, silence is golden. <laughs> like that you <laughs> <Yes. just> say. <laughs> those, old, 
Those old sayings are true, aren't they? They are. Jane, this is incredible just hearing about the work that y'all are all doing. And I love that y'all are partnering and working with these technology companies. How can we learn more to educate ourselves, to get involved, and to even just be a part of the Stuttering Foundation? Where can we go? Well, there's one place that's really easy, and that is our website, where there are there is just a lot of information. It's www dot stuttering help h e l p dot org so stuttering help h e l p dot org and you'll find free brochures free books a list of 16,000 libraries have our books wow. Wow. across the country every city in the country has our books so um, visit it today and, and yeah. also watch the films right there that's awesome we will jane this has been a pleasure Thank you so much for all you do, not only just for the Southern community, but for all of us, because it's very inspiring. And we appreciate your legacy and your work that you've been doing. Thank you, Ashley. It's a pleasure to be here today.